All right, today we're covering 3-1 using graphs and tables to solve linear systems. So we have two learning targets. First, I can solve systems of equations by using graphs and tables. And second, classifying systems of equations and determining the number of solutions. So remember to take notes, do the check it out problems, and we'll go over them next time I see you. A system of equations is a set of one or more, or two or more equations containing two or more variables. A linear system is just a system that only has linear equations. So we spent a whole chapter on linear equations and we know a lot about them already. Remember a line is an infinite set of points that represents the solutions to a linear equation. So when you graph a linear equation, you're graphing the solution for that equation. A solution for a system of equations is just a set of all points that satisfies all the, the equations in that system. All right, first we're going to look at figuring out whether a particular point is part of a solution set of a system of equations. So here's our example. We have two equations, x minus 3y is equal to negative 8, 3x plus 2y equals 9. And we also have been given an ordered pair. So the ordered pair is an x and y coordinate, and we're just going to plug the x coordinate into the x, x variable in both those equations and the y coordinate into the y variable, calculate the value we get, and make sure that they equal the correct value. So here's the work. Here's our equations. Here we are substituting x and y into the equations, and when we calculate them, we get negative 8 equals negative 8 there, and we get 9 is equal to 9 there, and that means that this point or ordered pair is a solution to that system of equations. Our next example, again, same type of example. We're given two equations, x plus, y, x plus 6 equals 4y, 2x plus 8y equals 1. We're given an ordered pair and we're going to substitute x and y the order, from the ordered pair into both of our equations and calculate the values. Here's our equations. Here's where we are substituting them in. And when we calculate, here we get 2 is equal to 2, which is correct. Here, we get negative 4 on this side and 1 on the other. That does not match that means that this ordered pair is not a solution to that system of equations. All right, you will do the next check it out problem. It's just like the one I just did. You will substitute that in and determine whether that is a solution to that set of equations. Next, we're going to look at actually finding solutions to systems of, e of linear equations by using graphs and tables. I'm going to emphasize the graph. I'm going to show you the table. You'll have to do a couple table problems, but as you'll see when we go through it, it's not really as useful. So here's our system of equations. In order to graph it, which I'm going to do first, um, well, we know how to graph linear equations. This one, I'm going to find the y-intercepts. The second one, it's easy to put into slope-intercept form, and from both, both of those forms, we know how to graph the, the lines that are represented by those equations. Okay, so on the first one, I found the two intercepts. The x-intercept is going to be 3 halves, and the y-intercept is going to be negative 1. So I can graph that line using those two, two points. On this one, I have subtracted 2 from both sides to get this in slope-intercept form, which is y equals negative or y equals x minus 2. From here, we're going to graph the two equations. They actually put both of them in slope-intercept form. You can do that as well. Either way, you're going to graph them. And this is our first equation. This is our second equation. When you graph it, you can see this point where they intersect, which is 3, 1. And that is our solution to that system of equations. It's going to be 3, 1. And we know that we can substitute this back into both equations to make sure that it checks out. 
So that's graphing. Table and graph, or, ta or table, sorry, is a little bit more complicated. Here are the two equations in slope-intercept form, which is the easiest way to do the table. And easiest thing to do is to start off with x equals 0. So I'm going to plug 0 into both those equations for x and calculate what y would be. And this is what we get. And we can see our x's are the same, our y's are not. So this is not our solution to the system of equations. So we're going to try another value. You can either try negative 1 or 1. They keep going with positive 1. When I plug positive 1 in for x in both equations, I get negative 1 third here, negative 1. So these two y va values are closer than these were. So I think I believe I'm moving in the right direction. If I was going further away, I would probably then go back and, and try negative 1 for x. But I'm going to move up another number. When x is 2, I get 1 third and 0, so y values are getting closer again. And finally, I get to my solution where I see 3, whoops, I see that 3 and 1 and 3 and 1 matches in both tables. So that's the solution, and that's how you use a table to find a solution to a system of equations. You will use a table and graph to solve this system of equations, and I want to see your table as well. I know it's kind of a pain, but it's something I'd like you to practice just so you understand it. Again, it's not something that would be emphasized. All right, now we're going to look at classifying system of equations. We have two ways of classifying systems. One is based on the number of solutions. So a consistent system is a set of equations or inequality that has at least one solution. It can have infinite solutions, but it has to have at least one. An inconsistent system is a system that has no solutions. So consistent, one or more solutions, inconsistent, no solutions. Next, we can classify systems based on their slopes and their y-intercepts. So if they have different slopes, the systems are classified as being independent. If they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they are called dependent. And in fact, they are end up being exactly the same line. So the next slide kind of summarizes all of this and shows you examples. So you can see in the first one, we have a point of intersection. That's at least one solution, so it's consistent. However, the slopes are not the same, so they're independent as well. So picture if you had a system of equations that graph like this, it would be consistent and independent. Next, our next system, it looks like it's just one line. So the equations may look different, but if you put them both into slope-intercept form, they would look exactly the same. And when you graph them, it would look like one line. This is consistent because we have at least one solution. In fact, we have an infinite number of solutions and dependent because the slopes and y-intercepts are the same. And then lastly, we have our third possibility, which is no solution. And you can see these lines are parallel. That means the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different. So they're not independent or dependent because neither of those, it doesn't fit, fit either of those cases. But it is inconsistent because there is no solution. So we're going to practice classifying systems, and then that will end our lesson. First example, classify the system and determine number of solutions. All right, so we want to figure out whether it's consistent or inconsistent, dependent or independent. Your, the first step to doing this is put in, in y in uh, slope-intercept form. Put it in slope-intercept form allows us to look at the slopes, the y-intercepts, and figure out whether they're going to be parallel lines or not, or the same line. So when we do this, they've done this here for us you can see that the equations end up being exactly the same. So here's our first one. Here's our second one. Since the equations are the same, that means we have the same slope, the same y-intercept. We have consistent system because 
it's got at least one solution. In fact, it has infinite solutions and it's dependent. Next example. Again, we're going to put them into slope intercept form first. And when we do this, first one becomes that equation. Second one is this equation. You can see here the slopes are the same. The y-intercepts are different. What kind of lines are these? Well, these are parallel lines. So we know parallel lines never intersect. We would classify these as inconsistent. And no solution with no solutions. All right, you will do the next two check it out problems. Come with any questions that you have. Here's the first one. Here's the next one. We will go over them in class and I'll answer any questions.